Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at lead code problem and the problem's name is insert interval. So in this question, we're given an array of non-overlapping intervals called intervals where each element inside the intervals array represents the start time and the end time. So if we take this, one is the start time and two is the end time. And this intervals array given to us is sorted in ascending order by the start times. So here, as you can see, these are the start times, right? So they are sorted in ascending order. And we are also given a new interval and we have to insert it into the input array intervals given to us. So this is a start and end time pair. We have to insert it in such a way that the input intervals array after inserting still remains sorted in ascending order based on start time. And again, it should still remain non-overlapping. So it means you shouldn't be having any overlapping for the intervals after inserting the new interval. And finally, we have to return the intervals array after inserting this new interval and following these two conditions. And this is a note that you can make a new array and return it because we don't know the size of our output array, what our output array will look like, but we have to return a 2D array. So first we can declare a result list and then convert this list into a 2D array. So let's take the first example given to us. So here, as you can see, this is the input array sorted based on start times and there are not overlapping. And this is the new interval array. So we start with the first element. Let's declare our output list. So this is our current interval 1 comma 3 and this is the new interval 2 comma 5. So let's represent it based on our number line. So this is 1 comma 3. 2 is here, right? So 2 comma 5 will start from here. So this is 2 comma 5. And here, as you can see, this is the overlapping. So we shouldn't be overlapping. And how are you determining that it is overlapping? This is the current interval i. You're taking its start time and checking it with the new intervals start time. And you find a overlap and what will be the modified interval? It will be min among the start times. So min among both is 1 and max among the end times. And max among 3, 5 is 5. So this is the new interval. And now we move forward. So this becomes the new interval now, 1, 5. So I write it here and this is the current interval, 6, 9. So again, let's represent it. The current interval is 6, 9 and the new interval is 1, 5. Since there is no overlap, we add this into our output list, 1, 5. And this is the current interval i, 6, 9. And that is the expected output. So if you have solved the previous question, merge interval, it is an extension to that question. We just have to form the new intervals array by adding this interval first and then merging it. So let's take this example and see how we can solve this using merge interval approach. So this is the new interval. Let's create a new input by adding this interval in the end. So we add this in the end and extend our size. So after adding that, this will be our new array. So we added this new interval in the end, but as you can see, it is not based, but as you can see now the array is not sorted based on start time. Now we implement merge interval. So after implementing merge interval, your final answer will look like this. Let's take a look at the code, how you perform merge interval. So in this approach, we are creating a new input array by copying the input given to us and extending its length by one. So this plus one is for the new interval, which we are going to add. So at the last index position, we are going to add this new interval and we have our new intervals array ready. On this new intervals array, after adding our new interval, at the last index, we're going to perform merge interval code. So this is exactly the merge interval code for the lead code question. So first, this is the modified input array and we are sorting it based on start times because it is not guaranteed that this merge interval satisfies this condition. So we're first sorting it based on start times. So we're taking two objects and comparing it based on their start times. And I'm creating a linked list, which will be our output, but this return type is a 2D array. So here we're converting this linked list into a 2D array in the end. So first we are iterating through all the intervals using a for each loop. Now we have an interval. So for example, if you are iterating through this, we have one interval here. So we are iterating through the modified intervals, one interval at a time. So initially, if this merged interval is empty, we add that current interval directly or we are checking the start time of the current interval and comparing it with the value present inside the last index position inside this linked list and comparing it with its end time. It means there is no overlap, so we can add it. If there is an overlap, we are updating that interval and adding it at the last index position. And finally, this process will happen for all the intervals after adding our new interval in the end and we and perform this operation on the modified intervals array and we're converting this linked list into a 2D array because this function returns a 2D array. And we're calling this merge uh, helper function here and returning it based on our new intervals uh, array, which is of n plus one size 
of the original intervals array. So this is a very slow approach because we are sorting the array and modifying our input array. And now let's optimize the approach. You don't have to create this new array and then merge interval. You can do it in O of n time and O of n space by creating a new output list. So in this approach too, we have to create a output result and this will be a list. We don't know the size of the output and we'll convert this output list into a 2D array, which is the expected return type. So first we start with the current interval i and we compare it with the new interval. So we have 1 comma 2 as i and 4 comma 8. Now how do you know if these two are merging? So let's take the first interval 1 comma 2 and this is 4 comma 8. Now we know there is no overlap. So we can add this interval into our output. So 1 comma 2 will be in our output. And now we move the current interval forward. And now the i will move forward and 3 comma 5 is a current interval. So we have 3 comma 5 and we have 4 comma 8. And now there is a overlap. So we have to modify our new interval. So how do you do? Like I said, we take the minimum among this. So minimum among this is 3. And we take the maximum among this, which is 8. So 3 comma 8 is our new interval. And the next comparison we have to make on this new interval and not on this. So let me replace the new interval by 3 comma 8. And now we move forward. I is 6 comma 7. So we have 6 comma 7 and the new interval is 3 comma 8. So let's draw them. So this is 6 comma 7 and this is 3 comma 8. So we see there is an overlap and here what is the minimum among this? Minimum among this is 3. So new interval will now have 3. And the end time will be max among 7 comma 8. Max among 7 comma 8 is 8. So new interval will remain the same. And now move i forward. So i is equal to 8 comma 10. And new interval is 3 comma 8. So let's see by uh, forming the line. This is 8 comma 10. And this is 3 comma 8. Again there is overlap here. So again we take the minimum among the start times. Which is 3. And we take max among the end time. Which is 10. So we have to update our new interval. So we update this with 3 comma 10 and we move i forward. So current interval is 12 comma 16 and new interval is 3 comma 10. So current interval is 12 comma 16 and new interval is 3 comma 10. So how are you knowing if there is no overlap? You are taking the start time of current interval. So current interval end time is 16 and new interval start time is 3. So here as you can see first the new interval is appearing and then the current interval is appearing. So it means we cannot update our new interval again. So there is a no overlap. So we add our new interval into the result because it can't be updated more. So 3 comma 10 will be added and i is still here. We haven't processed this interval yet. So our task is complete. Like we can stop as soon as we added our new interval into the result and later on whatever is present in the rest of the array will be directly added into our result. So what all elements are there until then this is the last element. For example, if there are more elements, all of them will be added in its order of insertion. So here as you can see 12 comma 16 will be added and that is the end. So we end the iteration and whatever is present inside this result will be returned as output which is expected here. Now let's code it up in Java. Now in this approach, like I said, first we need to declare our output. So our output is a 2D array, but we don't know the size of our result. So I create a linked list. And this linked list is going to contain intervals. I'm going to name it result. And now we need a pointer i to iterate through one interval at a time. So I will start from zero. And using a while loop, we iterate until the end of the intervals given to us. So until i reaches the end, so intervals.length and first we are checking like in this case 1 comma 2 does not overlap with the new interval. So we add 1 comma 2 into our result, right? So how are you checking if this is a overlap or not? You are taking the current intervals end time and comparing it with the new interval start time. If current intervals end time is less than the new interval start time, you can add this interval into the result. So we do result.add of current interval intervals of i and we move for the next interval by doing i plus plus. So here we are comparing the current intervals end time. Intervals of i end time is at first index position. We are checking if it is less than if 2 is less than 4 and where is 4 new interval start time. So new interval of 0 and this will happen using a while loop. So until this condition meets we keep on adding the intervals into the result and outside this now we have to keep on modifying our output. So from here onwards if you see so we use a while loop again until the end of the array. So let's use a while loop where i is less than the end of the array intervals dot length. And now we have to keep checking until we no longer can update this new interval. So how are we checking? So i is here, right? There is overlap in this and this interval, right? So this is i. 
you're checking i start time so interval current interval i start time is at zero so until current interval start time is less than or equal to new interval send time so in this case it is satisfying with this interval also it is satisfying with this interval also it is satisfying and here it is breaking right and how is it breaking this interval start time is greater than new intervals end time and now we can't modify this new interval so until then we keep modifying a new interval so this code is for modifying new interval so current interval start time is less than or equal to new interval end time so until then we keep on updating our new interval so we have to update new interval start time and new interval end time and how did we update we compare the minimum among both of those start time so mat dot min of current interval intervals of i of 0 and new interval of 0 and end time should be maximum among them so here 10 and 8 so until 10 is greater than 8 so maximum among them so max dot max of current interval intervals of i end time and new intervals end time so until then we keep on updating our new interval and we keep moving our i pointer forward and now as soon as you can't modify your new interval anymore we have to add this new interval into our result so this is our updated new interval 3 comma 10 so we add this new interval into the result result dot add of new interval and our task is complete right our task is to insert the interval and we inserted the new interval but we are still have to add this interval into our result so what all intervals are remaining from i so i is here so for example if there were more intervals inside our array once we inserted our new interval whatever intervals are left we add them directly into our result so until i reaches the end of the intervals array we add our correct interval result dot add of intervals of i into our result and keep moving i forward in this case there is only one interval left to be added and once you reach the end we this loop will break and now we have our result ready inside this result so return that result as our output but this is a linked list and our expected output is a 2d array so we have to convert this linked list result into a 2d array so we can do this using 2 array method and declare the 2d array and this 2d array we have to mention the size which is of the size of this result so result dot size now let's try to run the code so this has to be interval the test case are being accepted let's submit the code and our solution is accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n because we are only iterating through the input array once and the space complexity is also O of n because we are using a linked list to solve this question. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.